the N-Series Recloser is designed to be easy to install and operate. This demonstration shows the procedure to follow when unpacking and installing an N-Series Recloser. In order to unpack the Recloser, you will need a large screwdriver, side cutters, a ratchet wrench or battery drill with 5 sixteenths of an inch and 3 eighths of an inch sockets, a 16 millimeter spanner, a 16 millimeter socket, four D shackles, and to lift the recloser, two slings and crane with a safe working load of 300 kilograms. If an external voltage transformer or VT has been ordered, it will be supplied in a separate crate, which is attached on top of the N-Series crate. You must remove the VT crate first. Using the 3 8 socket, remove the lid and place safely away from the work area. Perform a visual inspection to make sure that everything is safely secured and that there is no visible damage to any of the supplied components. For a standard N-Series order, components visible from the top of the crate should include one controller, one N-Series ACR, six HV cable tails, one control cable, six silicon bushing boots, one pole mount bracket, one corking gun, one box containing N-Series accessories kit situated underneath the bracket. Using the 516 socket, remove both narrow sides of the crate. Briefly check the controller to ensure it's securely mounted and free from damage. Proceed to the opposite side and cut each strap holding the bushing boots and the control cable in position. Remove the control cable, caulking gun, bushing boots, N-Series accessories kit and store them in a clean, dry place. Using the 5 16 socket, unscrew the four screws that attach the pole mounting bracket to the timber brace. Taking care not to damage the epoxy bushings, carefully lift the mounting bracket out of the crate and place it away from the work area. Note, the pole mount bracket weighs approximately 24 kilograms. Please ensure that correct lifting methods are used. Using the 5 16 socket, unscrew the brace holding the recloser in place and remove it from the crate. Remove the six cable tails that are bent over and around the top of the controller and place them safely away from the work area. Note that the cable tails are coiled and may spring back when removed. Fit D shackles to the lifting points on the recloser and attach with appropriately rated slings to the crane lifting point. Before lifting the recloser from the crate, ensure a flat clean area is available to lower the tank to. Carefully lift the recloser from the crate and lower it to the prepared area. Note that the weight of the recloser is 225 kilograms. Please take care handling the suspended load and ensure safe lifting methods are used. Once the recloser has been removed from the crate, the controller can be easily unpacked. Carefully roll the crate onto the side opposite the controller. This puts the controller in a horizontal position so it can be unbolted and safely lifted from the crate. Using both the 16mm spanner and socket, remove the top and bottom bolts holding the controller to the crate. Now carefully lift the controller from the crate and store it away from the working area. Note, the controller weighs 35 kilograms and should be removed by two operators. Please ensure safe lifting techniques are used. Remove the six blue protective caps off the N-Series bushings. Visually check each bushing ensuring they are clean and damage free. If the bushing has become soiled, then lightly clean with methylated spirits and allow to dry. If possible, assist the drying with compressed air. Each bushing has a factory fitted cable palm installed to provide a connection to the high voltage cable tails. These palms are torqued to 75 Newton meters. Ensure the cable palms are clean and undamaged. Lightly sand or brush the aluminium palm to remove oxide. Then clean the contact area and apply a thin layer of electrical joint grease. Unpack the N-Series accessory kit. The contents include six tubes of silicon paste, 
one clamping ring spanner, 12 M10 bolts, each with a flat and spring washer, 4 M12 bolts, each with two flat washers and a nut. Visually inspect each bushing boot, ensuring they are clean and undamaged. If necessary, clean with warm soapy water and allow to dry. Remove the protective foam from each cable tail lug and check the lug is clean and undamaged. Fix all six cable tails to the cable palms with the 12 by M10 bolts supplied. It is important both the flat washer and spring washer are used to avoid the possibility of the bolts loosening. Each bolt should be torqued to 44 Newton meters. To install the bushing boots, firstly charge the corking gun with a tube of silicon paste and lightly grease inside the tapered end of the first bushing boot as shown. Thread the cable through the bushing boot and slide down the cable, stopping approximately one meter from the bushing. Place the screwdriver between the cable and the top of the boot to relieve air pockets that may be generated while the boot is being filled with paste. Holding a rag over the top of the bushing boot, continually fill the boot whilst rotating and lowering the boot towards the bushing. Using a rag as shown will minimize the paste lost out the top of the boot and the rotating action ensures that the paste is compacted in the bushing boot with no air voids generated. Once the cartridge is empty, the boot can be slid down the cable tail to meet the bushing. One cartridge should be used per boot, except when the unit is an N38. For the N38, an extra cartridge is supplied. Ensuring the screwdriver is still in place, the bushing boot can be slid over the bushing to meet with the bushing boot clamping rings. This involves rotating and pushing the bushing boot during which time paste will ooze out the top and bottom of the boot. This is to be expected and is desirable. Once the boot meets the clamping ring studs, the clamping ring spanners supplied as standard by NULAC can be used to fix the boot. Short, sharp taps are more effective than continual pressure when fitting the clamping ring. Once the ring is clamped in place, remove the screwdriver and wipe any excess paste away from the top of the boot and clamping ring with a clean cloth. Repeat this process for the remaining bushings and cable tails. Once the bushing boots are fitted, the next step is to install surge arresters as per the manufacturer's instruction. Surge arresters are to be installed on the surge arrestor brackets located on the source and load sides of the recloser. Surge arresters are compulsory for all overhead installations. Three important things to note when installing surge arresters are terminations should be made as close to the bushing boot as possible. Surge arresters should be fitted to the surge arrestor brackets at the torque specified by the manufacturer. Surge arrestor connections to the high voltage cable tails should be covered to avoid the possibility of phase to phase faults. Once the dressing is complete, dispose of all waste in accordance with your local regulations. Ensure that the pole is of sufficient strength to support the recloser. A structural engineer may be needed to calculate the stresses involved. Bolt the mounting bracket to the recloser with the four M12 bolts and nuts provided. The upper edge of this bracket sits under the corresponding mount on the recloser and the lower edge of the bracket bolts over the corresponding mount on the recloser. This ensures that the weight of the recloser is supported by the bracket and not the bolts. The bolts should be tightened to 50 Newton meters. Once the recloser mounting height is known, Drill the top ACR bracket hole. From the dimensions of the bracket, mark and drill the bottom hole directly below. Install bolts suitable for the recloser load as shown. Note these bolts are not supplied by NULEC Industries. Ensuring all lifting points are correctly secured, slowly lift the recloser up the pole and maneuver so the ACR bracket meets with the prepared bolts. Securely mount the recloser on the power pole. Tighten the bolts to the required torque. Detach all lifting points and lower the lifting device from the line. Complete all the necessary high voltage connections. This may require shortening of the cable tails.
Locate the recloser's earth stud and remove the nut and two flat washers. All high voltage equipment should be common to this earth point. Connect the earth wire to the recloser and run it down the pole to the main earth connection. The surge arresters do not require an alternative earth path as they are earthed through the tank. Using multiple earth paths can damage the recloser and electronics. If an antenna is going to be installed, this should be connected to the controller via a bulkhead surge suppressor to ground. Note a minimum copper conductor of 16 mm squared is required for the main earth. Cut the zip ties from the coiled control cable, then remove the protective bags from each end. Distinguish between the control cubicle and switchgear ends of the control cable. The retaining plate designed to meet with the recloser is larger than the control cubicle retaining plate and has an indicated corner cut at 45 degrees. The control cable should be the correct length for the installation in order to avoid coiling of the cable. When calculating the length of the control cable, ensure there is enough length to incorporate a drip loop at the recloser and neat curve feeding into the controller. This will avoid any unnecessary stresses on the control cable. The control cable provides the connection from the controller to the recloser by a 24-pin Burndy plug connection. Two electronic cards interface these connections. Control Cubicle Entry Module or CCEM Switchgear Cable Entry Module or SCEM Each plug has 24 pins, a double notch indicator on one side and a single notch indicator on the opposite side. Care must be taken when connecting as incorrect alignment and applied force can cause damage to pins creating possible delays for installations. Lift the recloser end of the control cable up to the recloser. Unbolt the SCEM compartment cover plate from the bottom of the recloser and remove the blanking plate. Feed the control cable through the SCEM cover plate and connect the control cable to P1 on the SCEM located inside the recloser. Grasp the plug by the short sides, check orientation, gently locate it onto the socket and push firmly home. Check it has locked by gently wriggling the plug. If the plug cannot be pushed on with moderate force, then it has not been located properly. Heavy force is never required. Fit the control cable retaining plate to the SCEM cover. Then secure the SCEM blanking plate with the six wing nuts provided. Shape the drip loop in the control cable and begin saddling it to the pole. It is essential to keep maximum separation between the main earth and the control cable as possible. The minimum requirements are 200 mm for wooden and concrete poles and 150 mm for steel. If the controller is to be bolted to the pole, drill the top hole and fit the bolt. If it is to be strapped, feed the straps through the slots on the upper and lower mounting brackets. Lift the controller into position and bolt or strap it to the power pole. Remove the controller blanking plate and feed the control cable into the bottom of the controller. Ensure the controller is powered down by switching off all MCBs. This should be done whenever connecting or disconnecting the control cable. Connect the control cable to the controller at P1 and attach the retaining plate to the control box. Continue to fix the control cable to the pole using saddle clamps at intervals down the pole. Feed controller earth stud should be connected to the main earth bond by a short tee-off. Newlec recommends a crimp connection to be used on the controller earth stud and a parallel grove clamp to provide the connection to the main earth bond. No other connections to earth from the control cubicle are recommended since surge currents will also flow in those paths. The controller's electronics are internally protected from potential differences that may occur between the recloser and controller when surge currents are flowing down the main earth bond. 
This earthing arrangement has been designed to minimize the risk of touch potential for operators whilst at the same time affording maximum protection to the electronic circuit boards. This earthing arrangement is identical to the one used for the ANSI C37.60 control element surge withstand type test and is the only earthing arrangement that will guarantee that the integrity of the equipment is maintained under impulse conditions. This arrangement is identical for both conducting and insulated power poles. Once the control cable and earth connections have been completed, the controller can be powered up by switching on both MCBs. A quick diagnostic test can be complete by cycling to the switchgear status screen on the front panel. For normal operation, this screen should read SF6 pressure 37 kilopascals, auxiliary supply normal, battery voltage 27 volts, ACR connected, ACR data valid. If all these status points are satisfied, the switchgear can be successfully operated. If there are complications with your installation, please refer to the N-Series technical manual or for any further questions on the N-Series automatic circuit recloser or any other NULEC products, please contact NULEC Industries directly.